good afternoon. So um, just to know uh, who, who has experience in uh, running uh, virtualized networking functions like vSwitch or vRouter on a server. Thank you. <coughs> who was, uh, who, who uh, actually used today uh, SmartNix on the network? Thank you. Who knows what is FPGA? Thank you. So I'm going to speak today on uh, FPGA and data processing on FPGA. And actually, more precisely, on, uh, on um, <coughs> running networking and security functions on FPGA uh, to accelerate uh, server networking performance. <clears throat> so for those who don't know what is FPGA, I'll, uh, so FPGA is essentially like a CPU, but is uh, targeted to handle day, uh, parallel processing, therefore best suit to run data processing uh, versus CPU that is best suit to run applications. So, um, <clears throat> so what we see is we see the huge growth in, uh, in uh, data usage on the network. This is mainly because of peer-to-peer -peer communication, <clears throat> uh, cloud uh, activities, security, uh, social media, social networks, and all these kind of stuff, uh, which actually result with uh, explosive uh, growth in uh, data usage. Now, the main problem in this uh, growth in data usage is actually the latency, which is associated with uh, running virtualized software authentication and uh, security. So, the main, uh, so because of the need for uh, more data usage, uh, there is a, a need in the network for, this is why all the, all the operators today build 5G network in order to generate more bandwidth to the user. And this also results with explosive growth in the data center and latency and many other uh, bottlenecks that uh, need to be solved. Therefore, um, the industry uh, push the data centers closer to the users, means to the edge of the network. And we can see this in this slide, we see the anticipated growth in the age data center market uh, from now to 2024, where main, uh, main uh, application or main uh, use is IT, uh, telecom, uh, co-location. Actually, co-location uh, means that uh, someone uh, leaves a uh, building and offer space to other operators, other data center provider to put their uh, equipment on it. So this is, uh, so essentially also co-location is also, also meant to deliver IT and uh, data center and cloud uh, uh, services, uh, same as, uh, as uh, the, the IT and telecom uh, uh, section, which is here in this slide. What we also see is uh, plenty initiatives uh, in the uh, telecom and in the edge uh, of the network. Uh, this starts from Amazon uh, Cloud uh, Front, which is uh, edge services at the, from Amazon. Uh, Azure uh, IoT Edge. Azure IoT Edge is a, is a, is a service that uh, serves uh, Internet of Things. And, uh, and uh, also uh, Cold. Cold is a initiative by the bigger uh, telecom providers uh, that actually uh, try to re-architect the central office as a data center. <clears throat> so the main application in the edge is actually IoT aggregation. Uh, these are uh, broadband gateway, mobile gateway, security gateway. These are the services that we need to support in the edge of the network. Uh, to understand uh, the environment, uh, just go back a bit uh, to see what are the networking equipment that uh, someone needs to deploy in the data center. So first of all, uh, top of the rack switch, you need to have on each rack 
uh, you need to have a router uh, to connect between the rack, and you need to have a router to serve the virtualized environment like OpenStack. And in addition to that, you need to have a router to towards the network. So on top of, other than the servers, there's plenty of other uh, networking equipment that needs to be a, a, a architect and deployed in the data center. Now, when we go to the cloud environment, <laughs> it's more complicated. Why? Because in the cloud environment, we need to have additional gateway, a gateway for the virtualized software, which is called NFVI. So in the cloud, we need to, to and when we want to deploy a, a data center uh, with direct uh, connectivity to the access network, now you need to serve mobile users, uh, residential users like broadband connection, uh, business users. Each one comes with different protocol. For example, mobile comes with a GTP protocol. Um, broadband uh, runs with PPP. Different kind of sessions. Different, no one knows how to talk which is each, which, uh, with uh, each other. It means uh, if you want to connect IoT, then also uh, plenty of different uh, protocols. So when you get this kind of traffic to the virtualized software, now the uh, situation becomes tough because you need to classify all those different kind of protocol, send them to a different VNF, different machine, different uh, uh, CPU to run the uh, right application doing load balancing. And at the end, also, when you serve the customer and traffic goes to the customer, you need to have per subscriber SLA and quality of service and monitoring. Uh, uh, and then this requires additional equipment. Uh, <clears throat> but the main problem with the edge is that you don't have space. You need to rent a space in a co-location uh, environment. There is no power, enough power to, to put all the equipment that you usually use in a data center. Therefore, what we uh, propose to make it simple, we call, we do uh, actually a router on a NIC. So if you anyway use a network adapter in your server, we uh, also deliver within the network adapter router functionality, which eliminate the need for external equipment, eliminate the need for a uh, router for running OpenStack environment, uh, serve as a gateway to the NFVI, means all the traffic that comes with different kind of protocols, terminate protocols, uh, send uh, different uh, applications to the right virtual uh, networking functions, uh, and doing load balancing, and the traffic goes out from the network or from the servers out to the users, perform per subscriber SLA and the uh, monitoring. And uh, now if we go and look at uh, the, the environment, not on a specific server, uh, populating such kind of a router on a NIC actually enable you to connect many servers in a daisy chain uh, and doing uh, switching between VM to VM, uh, support complete virtualized environment, such that you can switch traffic from one VM in one server to another one only with this kind of uh, router on a NIC without the need for external uh, uh, routers and equipment. And this actually saved a lot of space uh, within the data center. So other than saving space of uh, uh, external uh, devices like routers, what you actually save is on CPU power. Because when you run this kind of solution, we actually accelerate the networking and security appliances using minimal amount of CPU's core because all the data pass, all the functionality runs on the, uh, on the uh, FPGA uh, NIC. And uh, uh, on the CPU, you just need to run the applications. So the solution, what we provide is solution on using FPGA. FPGA, as I mentioned, is like a commercial off-the-shelf programmable platform that has been used in different, many different kind of applications. And, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, when you go and deploy solution with FPGA, it's like the same as you deploy CPU on a server. 
uh, and that can be uh, simply customized to deliver different kind of solution in different kind of environment without the need to design new ASICs uh, or without the need to, to uh, run proprietary uh, hardware equipment on your uh, server or on your network. Uh, <clears throat> so, so you do with this FPGA, it's open as I said, it's programmable. Uh, we are doing all the data pass uh, functionality on the FPGA. No need to run it on a, on a CPU. And it's not only us doing this. What is important that we are doing something which is in line with the tier one cloud providers. Uh, and if you talk about uh, Microsoft, Amazon, and uh, Intel, all of them use FPGAs on their uh, uh, NIC to accelerate and uh, to, and to stop burning CPU cores for something which they are not used to do. CPU better b to use uh, in uh, an application and uh, on FPGA they run all the networking and data pass functions. So this is our um, FPGA uh, SmartNIC, full router functionality, including security offload and IPsec, and also accelerate uh, VNF uh, functions and uh, reduce uh, dramatically the amount of core needed to run a uh, virtualized uh, networking uh, function like virtual switch, virtual router, and, and other. What is also nice with this kind of solution that the programmability is not just in the functionality, but the programmability is also on the interfaces. If you go and deploy and run with this kind of uh, network adapter, uh, you simply need to have a single card, one stock. We can download onto the FPGA different firmware to support different interfaces. It can be eight port of 10 gig, 25 gig, uh, 40 gig, different kind of, uh, uh, of uh, interfaces, but you maintain a single stock. You don't need to maintain different uh, stock for different uh, uh, cards and uh, solutions. It's a fully programmable platform that handles the data because the FPGA used to handle data. So a bit about eternity. Uh, we are 15 years in uh, business. Uh, we design a unique uh, networking uh, and uh, security technology that enable us to fit into low-cost FPGA and uh, deliver full programmable solution compare, uh, and compare that to the functionality and price of ASIC. It's covered by multiple patents and we deploy this technology at uh, more than half a million platform uh, worldwide uh, which connect uh, 100 million uh, uh, subscribers. So we took this technology and implemented on this a, a network adapter. So uh, we run the, the code on the FPGA. The, the NIC is a commercial off the shelf, is, is, is actually can be uh, installed on any standard server. And all the appliances running on top of that. So today we also deliver uh, to our customer a complete network appliance like a router or a VPN gateway, all run on a fully programmable platform where the hardware is also programmed. So to summarize is just I suggest you to stop burning CPU cores and move to use FPGAs in your uh, data center and uh, save uh, lots of uh, uh, power, cost, and, and, uh, and space. Thank you.